Another quite obvious question that you might want to ask about these kind of weather systems is uh, why are they low pressure systems? Why is there a centre of low pressure at the middle of these kind of depressions? And what does low pressure actually mean in terms of weather? And it's quite interesting to, to think about that. And again, we need to think about weather systems in three dimensions uh, to be able to understand that. We perhaps need to go right back to what the definition of atmospheric pressure actually is. And the atmospheric pressure that we actually measure at the surface with a barometer or whatever type of pressure measuring instrument we want to use is telling us about the weight of the column of air above us all the way up to the top of the atmosphere. So if we have a little look at our di next diagram here, we'll see a little schematic cross section with height of a person standing on the Earth's surface with a column of air above them stretching way up to the, the top of the atmosphere. And if that person was measuring the pressure, what they'd be measuring is the weight of the air um, weighing down on top of them. Now, if the pressure reduces, as it does in the centre of a low pressure system, then the weight of the air in the column must be reducing as well. That's the only reason why the pressure would change. And for the weight of the column of air to be reducing, something must be taking air out of that column of atmosphere. That's the only way that the, the, the pressure would fall. And so, well, what is it in weather systems that results in the, the pressure of, of the, the column of air reducing? And so, what is it that's actually taking air out of the column? And again, if we think about the three-dimensional structure of motion within a weather system, we'll be able to understand that in a little bit more detail. Now, near the centre of the depression, the air is rising, and particularly near the frontal um, surfaces, as air rises up the warm front and the cold front, we see air rising. And so uh, there's some vertical motion uh, going on in the atmosphere, and that vertical motion must be um, capped um, at some upper level in the atmosphere, and it's capped by the tropopause, which is the boundary between the troposphere and the stratosphere, and we get very little vertical motion through the tropopause. So as the rising air uh, reaches the tropopause, it can't carry on rising, it hits the tropopause almost like a lid, and starts spreading out. And near the surface of the Earth, there's a restriction to vertical motion as well. We can't have air moving through the Earth's surface. So uh, the rising air that's in the centre of the depression is being replaced at the surface by uh, air flowing in inwards towards the centre of the depression. And then at the upper level, near the tropopause, air is flowing outwards, out of that column. And so um, we have rising motion in the centre of the depression, inflow near the surface, and outflow aloft. And as it goes, within um, a developing weather system, the outflow at the upper levels of the depression is larger than the inflow near the surface. Now this means that um, the atmospheric circulation in a depression is taking air away from the column um, above the centre of the depression more rapidly than it's being replaced near the surface. And that explains why the pressure actually falls in the centre of the depression. The upper level flow is taking air out of the column and therefore the weight of the column that we're actually measuring is decreasing. Another thing that we're perhaps quite familiar with, but maybe don't understand exactly why, is that um, this kind of depression leads to strong winds. And we know from watching the weather forecast on the television, we're always told by the weather forecasters, that if the isobars are close together, then the winds will be very strong. And if the isobars are close together, that means we have a very strong pressure gradient. It means that the pressure in the centre of the low is very different to the pressure on the outskirts of the low, and therefore the pressure gradient is very large. And we know that that's associated with strong winds, but perhaps we don't know exactly why. Now, the reason this comes about is due to uh, the fact that a pressure gradient, a horizontal pressure gradient, is what drives horizontal winds in the atmosphere in the first place. Uh, air wants to move from areas of high pressure towards areas of low pressure to try and even out the imbalance in pressure that's been created by the vertical motion and the outflow aloft. And so, near the surface, in a depression, the winds want to blow in towards the centre rapidly as possible to replace the rising motion and the air that's being lost from the column higher up in the atmosphere. And the stronger the pressure gradient around the weather system, the, the more rapidly the air wants to flow into the centre to replace the air that's being lost higher up in the atmosphere. Now, due to the Earth's rotation, um, that 
The, the air flowing in towards the center of the depression doesn't blow directly towards the center of the depression, it actually flows around the depression in a spiral, in an anti-clockwise spiral, uh, but gradually flowing in towards the center. And we know that, um, again, from looking at weather maps and watching weather forecasts on the television, that the air um, and the winds around a depression blow in an anti-clockwise direction in the northern hemisphere. I have a weather map here from a, a situation back in uh, January of 2009 showing a number of uh, different depressions and uh, um, showing um, some aspect of the pressure gradient around those depressions. Uh, you can see uh, five individual um, depression centres all marked by uh, an area of a centre of low pressure. You'll see a large area of low pressure up near Iceland, a smaller area of um, low pressure to its um, east uh, over Denmark, uh, again another small area in the western side of the Atlantic, and then an area of um, low pressure um, to the south of the UK over the Bay of Biscay, and finally uh, a, a fairly broad area of low pressure over Italy. Now the deepest depression on this particular weather map is the one up near Iceland. The central pressure there is 950 millibars, but the, the depression that's over the Bay of Biscay has much, much stronger winds associated with it, and we can see that the isobars around that depression are much, much closer together. So although the central pressure is 963 millibars, so it's, it's got a higher central pressure in the system near Iceland, it's got much more intense winds, and that's because the pressure gradient uh, near that weather system is much, much stronger. So the air trying to blow in towards the centre of that depression near the surface is trying to flow in towards the centre much more rapidly that's resulting in much stronger winds around that particular depression.